Welcome back. It's uh, The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're set uh, for uh, our first major conversation this morning. Um, of course, our guest standing by to do justice to this topic. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, has demanded uh, President Buhari, or has urged President Buhari, uh, to demand a refund of the 1.145 billion naira given to Niger Republic for the purchase of official vehicles. Well, this amount of money was not given to Niger, but it was uh, uh, approved to be used in buying vehicles for uh, Niger Republic. Now, Serap, as they're called, uh, made this demand via its verified Twitter account uh, on Wednesday. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed uh, on Wednesday as well. After the Federal Executive Council meeting, uh, she had to face the press. And uh, she confirmed that the federal government had approved 1.4 uh, billion naira for the supply of 10 Toyota Land Cruiser vehicles, V8 vehicles, uh, to the Niger Republic. And she also gave uh, reasons. The minister uh, said that Nigeria had always been providing such interventions to neighboring countries, uh, including Chad, Cameroon, and Niger, um, uh, including other countries, explained that President Buhari uh, reserved the right to take such decisions in the interest of the country and its citizens. Of course, this particular one, she says, is in the interest of uh, helping Niger in its security efforts, which will have uh, an effect, a ripple effect, on the security situation in Nigeria. You know, Serap, like other Nigerians, reacted to this, um, and they said in their tweet, quote, uh, the Buhari administration must immediately ask Niger, uh, uh, the Niger authorities, to refund the 1.4 billion uh, Nara approved for them to buy vehicles and the use and use the money to offset the ASU uh, strike, so that uh, or uh, offset the funding for ASU, so that those poor children uh, can uh, can go back to to school. Is what um, is what uh, Dr. Mukhtar Bello said. Uh, sorry, is what. Um, uh, Serap said, I apologize for that. Now, joining us to provide an analysis of this is Dr. Mutar Bello, uh, lecturer at the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kano. Sir, you're welcome. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the response and the, ex the uh, reasons given by the Minister of Finance, uh, Zainab Ahmed? Uh, sorry, l let me clarify one thing because it's uh, concerned uh, so, uh, so I beg the pardon of us that I'm not going to talk on their behalf, but uh, just as a political analyst. Uh, you see, uh, in political science, there are countries usually have a bilateral agreement, which are uh, mainly diplomatic. And uh, we don't know actually what happened, but what is missing in the line is Nigerian government should have explained to Nigerians the reason why they are buying all those uh, SUVs as an intervention to Niger Republic. Yes, it is quite all right that we have serious problems in the country. Uh, the security issues that is coming from uh, that, that, that mostly is sourcing from Niger Republic, and uh, it should be like a moral booster to Niger Republican uh, to, to, to Nigerian government, uh, so that they can uh, uh, put up more effort in uh, carving out all those uh, uh, areas where uh, we funds are coming from Niger Republic, but. Uh, some question has to be asked, why SUVs? Can they usually be used in counterinsurgency or in uh, uh, treating the problem of banditry across the Nigerian and Nigerian uh, boundary or borders? That is the question we are going to ask. Yes, we have serious problem internally in our country, uh, which government needs to pay much attention to, not uh, at these hours to be given uh, dashing money here and there, intervention here and there, uh, as we don't have problem internally in our country. Mm. All right, interesting. Um, uh, some have questioned the, uh, the, the choice of vehicle, um, that if you are you're talking about security in the northern part uh, of Nigeria and, of course, across the border in Niger, um, that you don't need to get uh, Toyota Land Cruiser V8 vehicles, which cost uh, over 100 million, which suggests that they are uh, very new models to fight security, or insecurity, mm -hmm. rather. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. That was also Nigerian are asking. Why SUVs? The SUVs are not to be used by the Nigerian military or soldiers there. It is only meant for the... The top executive, especially the those at the presidency, the president has solved there. So that was the questions. 
uh, and you see linking to what you have uh, uh, said uh, concerning the problem we have here in Nigeria, particularly the ASU protracted strike, which government has remained senseless and insensitive to it, while our students have been languiding at home for more than for about six, six months now, and the lecturers have not been paid their, uh, their, 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 their salaries, which has been uh, suspended, and uh, all the protests and other things, government is feeling that uh, it is not ready to even make some adjustment. But we are still waiting. But uh, on this issue uh, about given money or intervention in other countries, problems, when we have these serious issues, need to be stopped at these hours, needs to be stopped seriously. Hmm. All right. Um, uh, is it realistic what Serap is asking for, for these, uh, these uh, uh, monies to be returned to Nigeria. I mean, of course, the monies were not handed over to Niger, but uh, were given to a car sales company for these uh, vehicles to be purchased. Do you think uh, it's realistic, if the vehicles are already in Niger, that they will be returned to Nigeria, sir, is asking? That will not be possible, uh, because it is a kind of agreement. We don't know when it was signed. Uh, if you could remember, the Nigerian Prime Minister has been visiting Nigeria almost twice. And uh, Nigeria is one of the major actors that ensure is coming to office uh, after the, the election there in Niger. So uh, you can see the bureaucracy is so strong. And uh, uh, we don't know actually what happened, but uh, it is not possible for the Nigerian government to return that money. Mm. Pending, uh, looking at the high level agreement they have with Nigeria and Nigerian authorities. Mm. So, so in, all, in effect, what you're saying, uh, uh, Dr. Bello, is that um, uh, Serap is just wasting its time, you know, in calling for these monies to be returned to the, the Treasury single account from where it may have been taken from. It's just a waste of time. The Serap uh, organization probably should uh, not be wasting your time making such a request. Is it, all you say? Am I correct? No, uh, indirectly, we cannot say it is, it is wasted. Uh, it is a waste of time. Uh, Serap has been there, uh, now becoming a serious force in Nigeria, in ensuring that Nigerian government is uh, doing the best it has to do, considering the way and manner things are being done in this country. So even to come out uh, with girl to say, okay, this is what we want government to do, is uh, just like an, uh, given our awakening to Nigerians, an awareness that something is not being done in the right way, and Nigerians are now... Uh, learn so much from there and uh, maybe in the future that will be stopped but uh, we don't have to say okay it is wasting its time but uh, it's not feasible at this hour for nigerian government or for the nigerian government to repand those money that has already been allocated and that maybe the vehicle has already been procured also hmm. um uh, some have said you know what uh, it's it's um not a, a fair argument to to say yo oh, um, this money could have been used to to pay ASU lecture. So every money that government now spends, we say that she uses to pay ASU. And some have argued that every single aspect of uh, 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 government should be running, you know. Uh, and some have said that without security, there can be no education. So if it's true that these vehicles are going to use, be used to enhance uh, the security situation in Niger, which will uh, invariably affect Nigeria, um, that then that's that. That actually shouldn't be brought into this conversation at all because uh, for the universities to function properly, uh, terrorism, banditry, or whatever I want to call it, uh, in insecurity should be tackled. So what do you say about that? The security being more important than education or coming before education uh, argument. You see, there is a the trajectory or the nexus between the two is very strong. Um... The problem with ASU is not about 1.1 billion. It is an agreement that has already been signed between Nigeria and the Union since 2009, which is now in the process of being renegotiated. Uh, there are a lot of uh, processes that has already been uh, followed, uh, memorandum of understanding signed, but which government is not willing to put it into implementation so uh, compared to the amount that ASU is seeking, uh, this is so negligible. 
uh, with the SUB that has been the, on the amount that, that, that the government has spent on the uh, procuring the SUB for the Nigerian uh, government. But you see the connection of being putting people in educational uh, distance. Uh, and the problem that we are experiencing today of insecurity is strong. Had it been government since before is so sincere and also willing to ensure that our own educational sector has not been, uh, been made to face the problem or challenge that is facing today. Maybe the security problem will not have even occurred. Yeah, in the first instance. All right. All right. Um, uh, again, I'll bring this up. You know, uh, government is meant to be running, and you also have you know, different sectors of, of government, different departments, different ministries doing their jobs. So you have the education working, you have a uh, you know power supply or power sector working, oil and gas, you know, security and all that. And would it be fair to say that um, you know one 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 aspect of government should be uh, relegated? for another. So if government spends money on something, so that money could have been used for security. Can't we have government spending money on other things while ASU is still on strike? You see, governance is something which is uh, very difficult. Uh, running a country like Nigeria is not something that you can do it through a platter of gold. You need to research that there are areas that are uh, sectors that are essential. And these sectors are very important in uh, uh, mitigating some of the challenges that we are facing today. Had it been, uh, our government was so serious. I'm not talking referring to this current government, but uh, the inherent problem that we have uh, since the democratic uh, dispensation started in 1999. Uh, had it been, they are so serious, carrying out all these uh, uh, promises that you have already made that will affect the livelihood of people, uh, saying it is maybe from the health sector, the economy, the educational sector, and other things, all the problem will not have been experiencing, we will not have been experiencing it the way we are experiencing it today. Hmm. So it is not about relegating one sector against the other sector. All of them must be in the same pool. And uh, government must be serious in doing that. All right. So All right. we need a comprehensive approach to tackling some of what uh, challenges today. Now, you, you're, you're a lecturer um, in the Department of Political Science at Bayero University, Kano. Um, is it strange for a country to donate such uh, amount of money or you know items to another country? I mean, in 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 politics and in international diplomacy. No, it's not. There is what we call, in diplomacy, there is what we call reciprocity. The Nigerian government has been helping the Nigerian government in tackling the issue, especially banditry and the massive uh, influx of weapons, especially from Liberia. So at least Nigeria need to reciprocate. Mm, okay. So, so do you feel, because there's an overwhelming feeling that um, President Buhari has approved these, these uh, vehicles to be donated to Niger, uh, not just not for security, but because he happens to have his, um, his roots in Niger. That's what uh, a lot of people out there feel, and that's why he's, he's donating resources. Some feel that he's actually done more for Niger than he has for Nigeria. Uh, what do you say to this? Yeah, you see, that people may come out with narratives. I'm sorry that I'm not part of uh, this independent President Buhari. But you see, sometimes it depends on how willing the, your partner is in uh, coming up with a uh, kind of relationship. In international relations, there are so many factors that have to be considered in uh, forging bilateral or kind of uh, other kind of uh, diplomatic relations. Uh, it shows that the Nigerian government is so serious and want to uh, have a very good relation with Nigeria. Uh, Looking at most of the problems that we are facing today, especially in northern part of Nigeria, are directly intermingled with that of Niger. And if we are able to forge a strong relation with Niger, definitely 60 to 70 percent of the problems that we are witnessing today can be solved. Uh, not forgetting that the, the presidency has come out and said that they have been uh, doing the same thing 
with our, our other neighbors in Niger, uh, this is not Niger, uh, Chad, Cameroon, and Benin. But that of uh, Niger is so pronounced. And uh, maybe it is part of the government to uh, have a kind of adjustment in, in diplomatic uh, relation with other countries, especially our neighboring countries. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, if you were in the, in the shoes of uh, the president of the Republic of Niger, I mean, he recently gave some awards to uh, prominent Nigerians like uh, Liko, uh, Liko Dangote and co. If you were in his shoes right now, what will you do? Seeing what's happening, what's being said in the Nigerian media space and the reactions of, Ni of Nigerians, what will you do? What decision will you take? I beg your pardon. Uh, what, uh, Ali, pardon what you owe me or the president. No, no. If you were in the shoes of the Nigerian president, uh, having seen what is playing out and the reactions of some Nigerians, what will you do? You see, silence is better. Just keep silent. Continue doing the thing that you are doing. Because sometimes if you keep on explaining, you will lose the balance. And the thing may generate into something else. Uh, since that government has come out and explained, yes, they have confirmed, they have uh, procured the SUBs, the Nigerian government, so it has to take hindsight from uh, what happened and uh, make uh, certain uh, changes in the future. Hmm. All right. Some, some of, um, some of uh, you know, said President Buhari should be uh, uh, lauded or applauded, you know, for going through due process. In, in all of this, even though the federal government had not announced anywhere, but they did not uh, do anything illegal, everything was well documented. Uh, if you look at the document that David Hunde, the investigative journalist, put out on Twitter, it shows the, you know, the different offices and, and departments in the Ministry of Finance that have been uh, were copied. You know, they, it was referred to the Accountant General of the Federation. The necessary approvals and the necessary um, uh, checks had been, uh, you know, and due diligence had been done. And um, so some are saying the president should be commended for going through the official route and uh, 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 going through due process with this particular um, uh, uh, issue of um, approval of funds for, for Niger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, managing a country like Nigeria is not like managing your own house. It is the arrow that you make secrecy and uh, you can do whatever you want with your money. It is your money. So for, for managing a country, you have to follow certain processes. Not making it be pronounced to the public that we are doing this and that. But you have to go there. The record should be there. And that's what the president has been doing. So even if he left office, uh, the government that may come will find it easier to trace where the money has been spent. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, uh, do you think the National Assembly should have approved uh, such a donation? You know, I mean, looking at the budgeting processes and uh, the approval of the budget, the 2020 budget has already been approved. Um, is it possible that such an expense um, could be uh, made without National Assembly approval? Maybe you have a budget head that covers this particular expense. I don't know. Was it something that National Assembly should have been consulted first before uh, such a donation was made? Yes, one of the uh, major responsibility of the National Assembly is on appropriation. And uh, I think uh, part of it, it should be the responsibility of the National Assembly to ask why this money is being spent. And uh, maybe we have to do justice to the presidency. Uh, part of the budget that they sent to the National Assembly Assembly which has been approved, um, maybe but that aspect of the intervention that we witness uh, uh, in Niger uh, currently. Uh, maybe it is condemned that it's not being specific, the item is not being cleared. But definitely, if they ask the presidency to explain more on where they get the money or the resources without their approval, then they will be able to explain. We don't know actually what happened, and uh, maybe specifically, they do not itemize that we are going to procure 10 SUBs to Nigerian uh, authorities. So that has to be the responsibility of the committee taking charge of those uh, matters in the National Assembly to ask how the money is being uh, sourced and why it is being spent on that and uh, this. Thing. So from there, we can find if there is any discrepancy as what the presidency is doing and what the National Assembly approved. Hmm. All right. Um, the finance minister thinks that says the president, uh, all he needs to do is to check and to assess the request by uh, these uh, countries and that this was a request by Nigeria Republic. Do you find that um, uh, individual independent nations can make such requests to, 
to their neighboring or fellow countries to say we need A, B, C, please give it to us? Because she said a request was made. Is that what happens? Yes, you, you, you look at the United States of America, look at China, and look at Russia. Uh, Nigeria is one of the is one of the uh, giant in Africa, which is always trying to solidify and consolidate its own uh, distant power in the, in the African continent. Uh, there are there are some some of diplomatic things that the country can do to boost its own image. And uh, we're looking at the way and manner, Nigeria has uh, spent a lot, especially in Liberia, in Sierra Leone, recently in Liberia, where the Nigerian government was suspected to have uh, financed the whole election there. And uh, there are so, a number of activations that the Nigerian government can, can do. And uh, looking at the size of our economy, uh, Nigerian, Nigerian government can solicit assistance from Nigeria as we, we are soliciting assistance from China and United States of America. All right. Interesting. Um, anyway, uh, so, so if, if the countries involved in Niger and Nigeria do not come to an agreement where these monies are returned, um, what options can Nigerians, including Serap, uh, what options do they have to seek uh, a way forward in this? Is it, uh, is it a, 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 a lost cause already? Yeah, the, the, the option are, are already there. Serap has said, okay, it's given an uh, ultimatum to Nigerian government and Nigerian authorities. After that, Nigeria and uh, Serap and any other individual can uh, take the case uh, to court. Hmm. All right, all right, interesting. And wouldn't this be out of the jurisdiction of the courts? Because um, what the, the finance minister is saying is the president has the power to make such approvals. All he needs to do is to assess the request and look at... Um, uh, the request and see if it's actually going to be beneficial for Nigeria to release such, you know, money. And then if he thinks it's okay, the request is okay, he approves, you know. So will the court not decline to, to you know, entertain such a case if, um, or not rule that he has no jurisdiction or cases like that? No, when, we say, when we say the court, we are not referring, I'm not referring to taking uh, the pre the, pre uh, the, the, the the Nigerian Federal government, government to court as just like we are doing it at individual level. No, uh, constitutionally, it is the judiciary that has to settle this kind of dispute. So if they give their own body on it, that yes, they have done it constitutionally, uh, not unconstitutionally, then we have nothing to say. Hmm. All right. All right. Uh, in your opinion, before you go, since we're talking about Serap, Niger Republic, the Federal Government of Nigeria, and ASU, how do you think this ASU strike can be ended? Should the government just accede to their demands, or do you think ASU should have a bit of a, a shifting of grounds a bit to come to a meeting point with the federal government? You see, uh, negotiations uh, is a matter of trade-off. And uh, from what we had, uh, which I, am, I can say passionately I'm being affected, um, the offer on the table is not from ASU, but from the government. But unfortunately, government has not uh, invited ASU again. So we don't know actually what is happening behind the doors. Maybe government is trying to ensure that everything is uh, put in the final distance so that uh, they can uh, ultimately uh, solve the issue entirely and squarely. But uh, ASU has done a lot, and uh, if, if you look at the pattern of the strike this time around, it's not a total and comprehensive or holistic strike. They are doing it in batches. The recent one is just at another uh, distant adjustment to four weeks, and uh, if government is serious, it will not have allowed these four weeks to, to even uh, extend it. So uh, ASU has been doing a lot, and uh, there are things that I cannot say because I said I'm not a spokesman uh, of ASU. We, we have uh, an institutional uh, protocol of doing that, but I can tell you, government need to put more effort in solving this problem. ASU has done its part, and uh, the only thing is for the Nigerian parent and the Nigerian student to understand the whole issue surrounding this settlement which we, I am hoping in the next few weeks will be, uh, will be solved. All right. We can only but hope and hope and hope. Um, also, is that a, an extended four-week strike or added four weeks to uh, the ongoing strike? And let's see if um, 
uh, this hope will prove um, anything positive for us. Um, thank you very much for joining us all the way from Kano, uh, Dr. Mutabelo, lecturer in the Department of Political Science. We appreciate your time. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Right. Up next, uh, we look at sports and, of course, the Commonwealth Games have been holding in uh, the United Kingdom. We talked that and the English Premier League returns today. Arsenal taking on Crystal Palace. Uh, excited for that. Stay with us.